Hi, I'm Eric Rupert, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. We're coming to you today on location from the 2017 Summer NAM Show, Nashville, Tennessee, with our good friend Eric Rupert. What's up, Eric? All good. Beautiful. It's great. We're having a great time here making loads of noise. What? <laughs> there you go. I can't hear you, John. I can't. You're doing some really interesting stuff, and I want to talk about you and some highlights of your career, but I'd like to know, you're, you're originally from Ohio, right? Ohio, yeah. I, I was born in Ohio. I know you're a Cleveland guy. I'm well, from the middle of it. Born in Cleveland, grew up outside Detroit. So, boy, I don't hold that against you. You know, Ohio was was such a hotbed of funk back in the '70s. Did any of that, you know, make make its way to you? Well, oddly enough, if people don't know this, Bootsy Collins lives not far from Dayton and Cincinnati. Yeah. And when I was young, playing clubs in Dayton, I ran into Bootsy. But when I ran into him. He looked like Herbie Hancock. He had this tweed suit on and glasses, and I was like, freaked out. And then he walked up and goes, sound great, baby. And I was like, Boot. I just got an email from him not too long ago, and I wanted to interview him. We were going to drive down to the Summer NAM show and stop by and see him on the way, but we ended up flying to the show, so <laughs> we'll have to hook up with him uh, another time. You got that, Bootsy? We'll, we'll work it out. But tell me about how you first exposed to music and how you became a bass player well my my mother loved to sing and uh, she loved Ella Fitzgerald and I used to watch Ella and Ray Brown and you know they were married so that was like an amazing thing for me to see that and uh, I watched that and I was a huge Letterman fan and Carson fan uh, yeah I'm that old so um, but <laughs> but uh, I love Carson and Joel DeBartolo Joe DeBartolo and John B. Williams, who played on there for a short bit, and all guys that I'm lucky enough to call my friends now, which watching them as a child and growing up. Will Lee, I used to watch him jump up and down at the corner of the screen, and I went, that's the coolest gig ever. I want that. Yes. And, of course, Letterman ended, and I never got that call, but that's okay. Will, we'll talk about it later. I, I didn't get to interview Joel, uh, but I did know him. He was, boy, if there was ever a straight shooter... <laughs> He didn't mince words, but I've interviewed Will a couple of times, and I've interviewed John B. a couple of times. Real good guys. Beautiful people, amazing players, and I don't think the TV gigs even show off their abilities in any way. But um, but basically, it was it was watching Ray Brown, and I decided to be an upright player. But I started as a tuba player, and I did everything you could do on the tube. I was lucky to be accepted to Juilliard and a lot of little things like that. Did you go or were you just accepted? No, I drove by, um, but uh, no, yeah, um, I was accepted and uh, I- In I, a I, classical program? Well, only, they didn't have anything that they have today. In the 80s, you had to live in New York. You couldn't live in a dorm. So it was like, you know, a lot of money just to even have the gig. But um, yeah, no, it was, it was short lived. Uh, basically, while I was there, I ran into some drummers, played some bass, and I got lucky enough to play with Dr. John. So that kind of turned me into a bass player. So you were in the right place at the right time. At the right time. Yes, Dr. John. Yeah, um, yeah, basically. That, and, you know, this is before YouTube and the Internet. So if you, you had to have a name and you had to have people say your name, and I've been very lucky, touch wood, Ibanez wood, um, that... Uh, that yeah, I've I've had a really lucky time getting the right things. It's not luck. You have to be able to do the job. And uh, I studied with people like Ray Brown, Kim Stone, Jeff Andrews. Um, I had a brief Jocko moment, which we can't talk about because there were words that weren't never should be said out loud. Uh, said to me, but he was just out of um, Bellevue, and he was staying at Jeff Andrews's house. And I went to Jeff's house, and he screamed at me, and then sat on the couch the rest of the day. But it was, I had the privilege. Him, you know, I had the you. privilege to hang out with Jocko. I lived in Florida, and he had me over to a house to the house, and we were jamming in the living room. And it was about a month before he died. So, it was, yeah. so I I probably met him like days before you talked to him. But yeah, he did about a month at Jeff's house, just clearing out after Bellevue, and it, it looked really good. And we were all excited. I mean, what was it, summer of '87, right? Yeah. September of '87. Yeah. It was the summer when I met him, and you would have seen him. But yeah, so it's it. It was a sad exchange. Nothing, nothing should happen to anyone like that. So, yeah, but it's still a great experience to, to have had and to met those people and to have been mentored by those people. What's keeping you busy these days? 
Well, I, I live in Europe most of the time. I'm living between London and France, and I do West End. I do a lot of tours, uh, and I MD. So a lot of the things that I'm doing are every day playing something different instead of being on that one gig like you get and stay on forever. So tell me three or four cool things you've done in the last six months. Wow. Well, you'll have a laugh, but this week at NAMM has been actually one of my best weeks because an album was released in February that I played on 12 years ago. <laughs> It took this long for the guitar player to finish it, and now we've done the second album, and we played Thursday night for Roy Vogt's uh, Bass Invitational. I was there, and I dug it very much. And a lovely young lady won a year's lessons with you. I remember I saw that. So, But, um, you know, things like that, and r just doing loads. I mean, it sounds silly, but just doing a lot of stuff. I mean, I got to work with uh, um, Jimmy James, amazing soul singer. But that's kind of the life we lead, you know. I wanted to be like Will Lee. That's what I wanted to be. And now I do a job where I do jazz cruises, I do tours, and every single tour's got three or four different people. So I get to play something different every day instead of being stuck in that rut. I love it. It's you, great. Know, you remind me of, you know, you say Will Lee and TV and England. Dave Swift I interviewed about a year and a half ago. He's got the Jules Holland gig. So he's, what do you say, he's like the British version of the Will Lee former gig with Letterman? Well, 26 years he's been with Jules. Dave's one of my dearest friends. He's still on probation? Yeah, yeah. He's going to get a paid rise any day is what I hear. But no, Dave and I go out and have cigars. He's just had a beautiful baby. Yes. Um, lovely. Dave and I have one affliction, and I'm happy to say this. We collect bases. But oddly enough, we collect Ibanez bases. I've been collecting the, the 70s lawsuit bases, and I had a fretless um, musician, one of the beautiful ones from the late 70s, and I had two of them, and Dave bought one, and that's how he started his collection. And it was a few months later I talked to him, and I said, do you still like the fretless? He goes, I bought eight. Um, <laughs> so we talk Ibanez, we do a lot of stuff. He's an Ibanez endorser also, and uh, I was happy that he came on because he deserves everything he gets. He's Tell me about what you're holding here. Well, oddly enough, this is an old Ibanez. Well, old. It's older. It's from 2008. It was a short run. I picked it up and the custom shop's been beautiful to me. They made all gold hardware and did silly things for me. But uh, I've been working with Ibanez about almost 15 years now and uh, lucky enough to be part of the workshop series. When they were doing that, they were asking uh, bass players what they wanted or what they thought the world wanted. And we were able to get, put our input in, and oddly enough, this couple of them have come to fruition that I was helpful with. So it was great. But yeah, Ibanez, I'm an Ibanez happy guy. I got them all, literally. Ibanez happy. Tell me a little bit more about the rest of your arsenal. We are, by the way, sitting at the uh, PRA booth at Summer Nam. Why don't we talk about that? Well, PRA's a... Uh, I could not tell, by the way, the other night that you were playing through a wireless system. I, I'm t I, I, that literally is one of the reasons why I fell in love with it. Neil Jason was nice enough to key me into this whole thing, and he's been working with PRA for a while, and they finally released the product last year, and it's an amazing wireless. The low Bs, the harmonics, everything's great. So they've just been wonderful to me, and I'm here this year hanging out at their booth playing, and it's been great. But you said one of the nicest things I've been ever said let me rephrase that. One of the nicest things that was ever been said to me, you were commenting about how lovely the bass sounded and the space between the notes. And oddly enough, I do give a lot of credit to PRA for that because any amp you play through, you already know the tone. But when you don't have a cable, you really, really worry, are you getting all of the note or all of the sonic value of the instrument? And it was lovely. Yeah, they, they do a great instrument. Or, uh, I, I also said to you how I was impressed and how tastefully you were using the, the lower register, the sub E frequencies, and you're not down there all the time. You use them in just the right places, which really enhanced the music nicely. John, I appreciate that. That's a, that's a lovely compliment. And that's probably in one of my top five best things that have happened in the year. Because somebody like you telling me that, that's, that's a real, that's beautiful. Oh uh, shucks. T tell me a little bit more about you. Oh, oh. oh yeah, no, I was going to say. Were you going to say something else nice about me? Oh, I was. I was going to say I loved your hair today. It looks really nice. You love my what? I didn't hear your, your hair looks great today. Oh, thank you. No, I was going to say you were talking about the art. It's raining today. and I it's, know. It's, it's all fluffy and it's crazy. It's raining in winter, Nam, too. What's up with that? Oh, uh, and it's winter, but it's always California, so I don't understand that term. But, um. No, the Arsenal, uh, another great company that I got to work with for a long time is Laney out of the UK. Since yes. I'm living over there, I decided I would step into the, like, embrace the UK thing. 
and I, I worked with them on their Nexus series amps, which have just come out lightweight, 1,000 watt, 500 watt, great stuff. And again, it's all about the tone. And one of my things with the Ibanez, with PRA, and with that, and I, we talked about it the other night, I, I, I find it a compliment, and some companies freak out when you say it, but I consider everything I work with like a blank canvas, and I'm able to paint my color scheme on it and make my tones and that's what I love about it, that they've given me a product that I can actually make my own sound and it doesn't color it or do whatever. So, but Laney's been great uh, working with PRA. Um, How about strings? Well, I, I use a lot of different strings for different things. I play upright bass a lot also, you know, so I came from that world. Uh, I'm luckily to mastic on my upright. I use Rota sounds, which I've got on this bass right now. And sometimes I use the DR series, depending on what instrument I'm playing and what tones I'm looking for. How much upright bass are you playing these days? About every couple days. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, French bow or German bow? Uh, they have bows? <laughs> uh, I use both, actually. I was a German bow guy for years until I started playing in the pits for Broadway and West End musicals and touring, and the pit got smaller and I couldn't be as cool. So I play both French and. But there's that really cool bow I'm still trying to get a hold of, that finger bow thing that Tony Levin came out with. Oh, oh yeah. That yeah. looks really interesting, but it's only that long, so I don't know how, you know, it'd be, it would be short, long notes, so I don't know how that would work. Oh, so. There you go. Uh, well, what about the future, if you could predict the future, or if you know the future, because you seem to be, like you said, doing something different almost every day. What's in store for what's coming up that you know about? Well, like I said, we're working on this album this week while I'm here, which I'm excited about. It's another album, and I'm gonna get these guys over to the UK and tour possibly do a European tour of some festivals next year. But um, in general, just loads of little things. I, I, I'm producing more in London. I've been doing some stuff. I was very lucky to um, um, get um, my, the name completely lost me and I feel like an idiot now. <laughs> his name, I totally lost Oh, Neil, what's his name? Neil. You said Neil Jason earlier. No, no, no. Um, the original White Snake bass player, why can't? Neil Murray. Well, he, he said, you say, you say it like an American. You say Murray. It's Murray. I interviewed him not too long ago. From, uh, Neil Murray. Yes. Um, I was lucky enough to produce a couple of projects. At him as the bass player. And it was another one of the sweetest things I've ever heard because he wouldn't let me be in the room while he did it. He said, I, I don't want you watching me play. Yeah, and he said, did the uh, Queen tribute show for a long time. He's doing Queen. He's got a new band with uh, Bernie Marsden and all the old guys. And it's amazing. Um, and it, But... I'm getting to work with him again. I'm going to do some stuff, producing a lot. Tell of him stuff. hello. Oh, I will, of course. But yeah, just doing that. I mean, I, I never knew who I'm going to work with. I get calls in a month and they say, oh yeah, we're doing this and you're going to have these guys. And, Is I mean, there something you've always wanted to do but haven't been able to or haven't gotten around to yet? Yes. And I'm probably the only bass player in this room that will say this, but I've always wanted to work with Barry Manilow. And that's not a joke. I just consider him such the epitome of what music is. I have some friends that used to work with him and I was actually I had an opportunity to sub and do the gig in Vegas and it, it didn't work out for whatever reason. I don't even remember all the details but that's not a bad gig and he's he's kind of in the news again lately or he's doing stuff. He's been quite big in England. He, they, when he comes over he does lots of touring. So uh, but yeah it's I mean there's little things like that. I mean I was very lucky very young, the Dr. John. I got to work with Dizzy Gillespie for a short time, um, com you know. And again, it was who you know, and it was great. And then I, I worked with Dolly Parton when I lived in Nashville. I did a couple of, or did one of her albums at least. Um, and uh, you know, that album, oddly enough, has resurged as the old vinyl hip stuff in England. And I've been in bars, and they're playing me on the radio, and it, it, it's it is quite cool. I mean, Sting makes the joke about. He didn't think he was famous until the window cleaner was singing uh, Walking on the Moon or Roxanne outside his hotel, and he was like, wow. wow. I mean, you know, us bass players, it's a different thing. You play on loads of projects, you hear yourself, but sometimes you never, I mean, you know, not all of us get to play on the major albums all the time, yeah. and uh, it's always fun. Yeah, it's that's fun. great. That's great. Stuff, you know? What do you think you would be if you were not a bass player? I mean, something outside of music. Outside of music? Wow. It's funny because I don't know anything else. I haven't done anything ever in my whole life. But um, I don't know. I think, I think I'd be like a development guy for something, whatever it would be. Because I think I try to create jazz, anything you're doing. And I think I still would have to create something. I'd have to be out there 
making something that nobody else has kind of thing. That could be applied to just about any well, scenario, so that's great. Good answer. Yeah, no idea. Yeah. Well, Eric, it's great getting to know you. I've known a bit about you, but I've uh, never actually met you until this trip down to Nashville. So I thank you for that, and I'm happy for it. Well, I'm really pleased. John and I have, oddly enough, lived a bit the same life. We're both from Ohio. We both lived in Detroit at the same time, kind of. So it's really weird. Like, we've never run into each other physically until now. So well, Ohio, great you, to hang you, out. Know, you know, freak base, I'm yeah, sure. Of course, freak base. Well, uh, yeah, we we grew up just a you know, couple hundred miles away. Had to go all the way to London, England, to meet him and do the interview with him there. It so happens. It happens. It's exactly. I run into people in London all the time. We, we have laughs. Michael uh, Rhodes, who lives here in Nashville, yeah. who I saw a couple days ago, literally hadn't seen him in 10 years. Walking down the street in London, he was playing with Joe Bonamassa. And, <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's a it's small world, and we're all connected, all because of 4 Isn't right. that something? Well, congratulations on everything, and uh, keep us posted on what you're doing, whatever that is. Good luck on the current project, the record, and uh, happy Ibanez guy and everything else. Much luck, continued success to you always. Well, you too, John. Thank you very much for doing this. I, I feel very loved by the community lately, and it's very nice. The honor is mine. On location at the 2017 Summer and Am Show with our good friend and good guy, Eric Rupert. I'm John Liebman. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com.